I actually wanted to start by talking about your fiance, Caitlin. Yeah. Um, you guys apparently live 10 minutes apart uh, growing up, uh, but you never met here. Uh, explain how you guys met. Yeah, um, psychology class, she sat right behind me and it was kind of funny because I ended up missing a couple weeks and so I asked for some notes and all of a sudden we were going on our first date. Didn't really do a whole lot of studying. I don't think I'd, I may have gotten the notes from her, but I definitely didn't look at them. You guys did, I guess, long distance for a year and a half and that was the period where uh, you left Wake a semester early, she went to grad school. Um, explain this to me. Uh, you would FaceTime her nightly just to watch her study? Well, I, well, thanks for making it sound creepy. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, she would be studying and I'd be on the road by myself at some, you know, random town. That was the part that was hardest coming up through the Monday qualifiers was the fact that you're not with people that you know. It's not like it's a tournament where you're there for a full week. You're carrying your own bag, you're booking your own travel, you're doing, you know, catching the cheaper flight, going through Priceline, trying to find a, a room last minute or whatever if you made it for the week. Um, but it was just kind of our way of staying connected. She said that year and a half apart, long distance, was great for you guys. Um, how so? I was able to give 110% to my craft and she was able to give 110% to grad school. Um, you know, so we let it, we lived our, our lives during the day, but then in the evenings we'd catch up and see how things were going. And um, I think it really helped us with our communication. It was a long year and a half, obviously, for me on the golf course, but she definitely helped me get through it. So how'd you propose? I laughed a lot at Augusta because I proposed two weeks after, but I had had the ring, I believe I got it the Friday before Augusta, and put it in the safety deposit box, and I'm like, why am I having this sit in here? Like, why am I gonna wait till July? Because you, you weren't gonna do it till her birthday. Right, so the week of Augusta, I was actually planning how I was gonna get engaged to her and called a couple of her friends and we decided to go down to Austin and um, took her for a walk down one of the trails on the river and surprised her with some of her friends and proposed in obviously our favorite city. Um, how were the nerves? I had a speech, but it did not come out exactly how I was planning. I think I, I had like my little three or four things I wanted to say and just said them in a complete random order. She said yes, and then that was all I needed to hear. So, so some of those close to you said they think the reason why you did so well at the Masters in 21 is because actually, well, like your mind was also focused on planning this engagement? I needed an outlet, you know, I needed something. Cause if I sat there and was thinking about, oh, I'm in the last group of my first major or blah, 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 or, you know, first masters it you know, all of a sudden I'm just sitting there thinking about it. And so it was a fun, just kind of a spiritual week in a weird way for me. Cause it's, I'm in enjoying the history of being a golf nerd and just, you know, trying to soak up being at Augusta, but then I'm also, you know, calling friends, trying to figure out how we're all gonna meet down in Austin in two weeks. I understand those first few months after Augusta were hard for you guys. Yeah, it just it was different. I mean, you go from kind of having this general anonymity of like, oh, you know, it's this kid who's playing well to, you know, Adam Sandler tweeting out, you know, Mr. Gilmore's proud of you and all that. And, you know, Mr. You know, I get Gilmore's caddy and get comments like that week in, week out now. And I think the thing that was different for us was like People Magazine picked up our engagement. And a month prior to that, you know, nobody knew who I was, let alone in the golf world, people didn't really know who I was. It was kind of a shell shock moment for us. She says she can tell how your week's going by your body language, just even by watching you, I, I think, on TV. It's kind of funny because I think, like, the one thing that I've worked on really hard is trying to make it look like I'm either, whether I'm six under or six over, just trying to look the same. So even though I might be kind of a goof in some of the media press conferences and whatnot that I have, like, I'm, I look very boring out there. Caitlin can pick up on even like before around like how I'm feeling internally, you know, where it's, you know, fine has a lot of meanings whenever I say I'm fine, but she can pick up on it. I never wanted our relationship or anything that we do 
you know, together, I didn't want to sit there and talk about golf because it's like, I have the most selfish job in the world. I'm gone 35 weeks a year, basically. She's really been a sports psychologist over this past year, an, an unpaid member of the team. How specifically? We talked a lot before the PGA this year, um, before I lost in the playoff to um, Justin Thomas. I was pretty frustrated with where I was. I was working way too hard, just over practicing, over trying. And then finally, Wednesday night before the tournament, she just said like, hey, look, you've got your card locked up for the rest of the year. Like, you, this is kind of gravy, just go play. And uh, obviously it led to a great week. And so having someone, like I said, who's been there from the start, um, She's been a rock for a while, but especially this past year where our lives have changed so much, it's been, she's been invaluable. Why will you give yourself things to think about to take your mind off golf? I need that time away to just, you know, chill out, relax, you know, read a book, watch a movie with Caitlin, take our dog for a walk, just do something different, you know, plan an engagement in the middle of the masters. I understand you'll go down these rabbit holes on Google too. <laughs> Yeah, obviously it sounds like Caitlin gave you that one. Caitlin laughs at me where it's like, yeah, I think I'll teach myself how to play chess. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm told that you don't want to be one of these guys that plays professional golf forever. Uh, why not? You know, I, I love the game more than anything on earth. Like I, I, have, I've, I have a flat out addiction. I definitely will play competitive golf as long as I can, but I think I just don't want to be the FaceTime dad where my kids are growing up and I'm missing everything that they have until they're five or six or even later. I just don't want to miss my kids growing up. Like that's to me the main motivation out of everything.